It gives me great joy to address you today on the commission of the Royal Ghana Gold Refinery. This, at what the governor told us, the Bank of Ghana, through the Gold Pages program, has bought thus far $5 billion worth of gold, just in the last few years. Five billion dollars. Uh, this would, if we had not been operating this program, that means that five billion would not have been there. Because this five billion dollars is from local sources. It's not as a result of exports. Right? Can you just imagine Ghana without this five billion dollars? Where would we have gotten the foreign exchange to make up? Just to get three billion dollars from the IMF, look at what we have had to go through. We President of the National House of Chiefs, His Royal Majesty, Sajifu Amoti of Ferepeyi, King of the Achimabuapa State, Nanano, the Minister of Finance and MP for Karaba, Honorable Dr. Mohamed Amin Ada, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, and MP for Damango, Honorable Samuel. The Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast and also the Chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana. Governor of the Central Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison. Perma Triku Ampen III, Totroso Manhede. Okuji Aman Kweku Jampra III, Paramount Chief of Sufi Gerardo Traditional Area. Chief of Achim, Trump, representing Obrampong, Kwesi, Amo, Chiritwe, The Executive Chair, Royal Ghana Gold Limited, members of the Diplomatic Corps, CEOs and heads of agencies, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great joy to address you today on the commissioning of the Royal Ghana Gold Refinery. This historic achievement in the natural resources sector, specifically in gold, marks a significant milestone in Ghana's journey towards economic transformation and industrialization. Today, we celebrate not just a new facility, but a testimony to our government's commitment to adding value to our natural resources, creating jobs, and ensuring sustainable economic growth. The partnership between the government of Ghana through the Bank of Ghana and Rosie Royal Minerals Limited symbolizes a vision for a prosperous future in the precious minerals industry. A state-of-the-art refinery being commissioned today is equipped with cutting-edge technology that meets international standards significantly boosting our capacity to locally process gold and increase value addition prospects. Ladies and gentlemen, historically, Ghana has exported gold in raw form, missing out on significant revenue and job creation opportunities. The government of President Anato has been determined 
to make value addition a critical component of our export strategy since 2017. The launch of this refinery is particularly important as it realizes a key part of this vision. Originally, this vision was actualized through a joint venture between the Precious Minerals Marketing Company and Rosie Royal Minerals Liberty. TMC granted part of its land for the construction of the refinery. Despite delays due to COVID-19, the beautiful edifice we see today, which was started in 2018, was completed in 2022. I commend the board, management and staff of the Bank of Ghana and the PMMC for their relentless support and cooperation in seeing to the fruition of this historic national project. The establishment of this refinery is a strategic investment which contributes immensely to government's efforts in ensuring value addition of our mineral resources. Currently, our country's goal is exported in Dory form to be refined outside Ghana, resulting in rev lost revenue and missed opportunities for job creation. Between 2018 and 2023, Ghana's average annual gold production was 3.92 million ounces. That is 122.5 tons. All this gold was exported and refined, resulting in lost revenue, as I have stated. The refinery, which we are commissioning today, will offer premium to gold exported from Ghana. Initially, it is expected to create 80 to 120 direct jobs and another 500 indirect jobs, boosting domestic tax revenue in the form of corporate taxes and enabling us to refine to 24 carats, that is 99.99% purity, the same quality as a good delivery bar LBMA standard. With the ability to re locally refine our gold, we will be able to sell the refined gold at its appropriate price, enabling us to retain its economic value within our borders, while creating numerous job opportunities for the youth. In addition, Government's intention to refine all gold produced in Ghana will further enhance our economic independence and resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, with the Bank of Ghana's domestic gold purchase program, which started in 2021, and the refinery, we are positioning Ghana as the gold hub of Africa. After all, we are the largest gold producer in Africa. This marks a new era for Ghana and ushers us into our vision of building a resilient economy anchored on our mineral resources in a golden age of natural resource governance. To be able to do this, we need the cooperation of all stakeholders in the gold production value chain, both upstream and downstream. Government will consult the small and large scale miners on the best means possible to feed the refinery to its optimal refining capacity, while we come out with favorable policies to discourage smuggling. Ladies and gentlemen, a few years ago, government reduced the gold export levy, its withholding tax, from 3% to 1.5%. The result of this is that after a sharp decline in gold exports in 2021, the gold export volumes have been steadily recovering 
with 2024 showing promising signs. If you look at what the governor told us, the Bank of Ghana through the Gold Pages program has bought thus far five billion dollars worth of gold just in the last few years. Five billion dollars. Uh, this would if we had not been operating this program, that means that five billion would not have been there. Because this five billion dollars is from local sources. It's not as a result of exports. Right? Can you just imagine Ghana without this $5 billion? Where would we have gotten the foreign exchange to make up? Just to get $3 billion from the IMF, look at what we have had to go through. We have been able to pick up $5 billion from the local economy using cities. This historic achievement in the natural resources sector specifically in gold, marks a significant milestone in Ghana's journey towards economic transformation and industrialization. Today, we celebrate not just a new facility, but a testimony to our government's commitment to adding value to our natural resources, creating jobs, and ensuring sustainable economic growth. The partnership between the government of Ghana through the Bank of Ghana and Rosie Royal Minerals Limited symbolizes a vision for a prosperous future in the precious minerals industry. A state-of-the-art refinery being commissioned today is equipped with cutting-edge technology that meets international standards, significantly boosting our capacity to locally process gold and increase value addition prospects. Ladies and gentlemen, historically, Ghana has exported gold in raw form, missing out on significant revenue and job creation opportunities. The government of President Anato Fuad has been determined to make value addition a critical component of our export strategy since 2017. The launch of this refinery is particularly important as it realizes a key part of this vision. Originally, this vision was actualized through a joint venture between the Precious Minerals Marketing Company and Rosie Royal Minerals Limited. TMC granted part of its land for the construction of the refinery. Despite delays due to COVID-19, the beautiful edifice you see today, which was started in 2018, was completed in 2022. I commend the board, management and staff of the Bank of Ghana and the PMMC for their relentless support and cooperation in seeing to the fruition of this historic national project. The establishment of this refinery is a strategic investment which contributes immensely to government's efforts in ensuring value addition of our mineral resources. Currently, our country's gold is exported in Dory form to be refined outside Ghana, resulting in rev lost revenue and missed opportunities for job creation. Between 2018 and 2023, Ghana's average annual gold production was 3.92 million ounces. That is 122.5 tons. All this gold was exported and refined resulting in lost revenue, as I have stated. The refinery, which we are commissioning today, will offer premium to gold exported from Ghana. 
This year it is expected to create 80 to 120 direct jobs and another 500 indirect jobs, boosting domestic tax revenue in the form of corporate taxes and enabling us to refine to 24 carats, that is 99.99% purity, the same quality as a good delivery bar LBA standard. With the ability to locally refine our gold, we will be able to sell the refined gold at its appropriate price, enabling us to retain its economic value within our borders, while creating numerous job opportunities for the youth. In addition, government's intention to refine all gold produced in Ghana will further enhance our economic independence and resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, with the Bank of Ghana's Domestic Gold Purchase Program, which started in 2021, and the refinery, we are positioning Ghana as the gold hub of Africa. For all, we are the largest gold producer in Africa. This marks a new era for Ghana and ushers us into our vision of building a resilient economy anchored on our mineral resources in a golden age of natural resource governance. To be able to do this, we need the cooperation of all stakeholders in the gold production value chain both upstream and downstream. Government will consult the small and large scale miners on the best means possible to feed the refinery to its optimal refining capacity while we come out with favorable policies to discourage smuggling. Ladies and gentlemen, a few years ago, government reduced the gold export levy withholding tax from 3% to 1.5%. The result of this is that after a sharp decline in gold exports in 2021, the gold export volumes have been steadily recovering with 2024 showing promising signs. If you look at what the governor told us. The Bank of Ghana, through the Gold Pages program, has bought thus far $5 billion worth of gold, just in the last few years. $5 billion. Um, this would, if we had not been operating this program, that means that $5 billion would not have been there because this $5 billion is from local sources. It's not as a result of export, right? Can you just imagine Ghana without this $5 billion? Where would we have gotten the foreign exchange to make up? Just to get $3 billion from the IMF, look at what we have had to go through. We have been able to pick up $5 billion from the local economy using cities. All women under my presence. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to be able to obtain maximum value for the products from this refinery, it is necessary to obtain the requisite international certifications such as the LBMA. The good delivery bar certification. Achieving LBMA good delivery bar certification is crucial. This requires refining gold for at least three years and establishing an annual production of no less than 10 tons of gold. Also, the refinery must implement the LBMA's responsible sourcing program and pass an independent audit. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we expect 
to achieving the annual average production of 10 tons, I am confident that leveraging on the Bank of Ghana's domestic gold purchase arrangement for both reserve and gold for oil program with the support of the mines and the commercial banks in Ghana, as well as all the heavy industry players, this Royal Gold Refinery will be able to obtain the LBMA Good Delivery Accreditation in very good time. I urge all stakeholders, particularly large and small scale mining companies, to support Royal Gold Refinery in meeting these requirements. Additionally, the refinery, among other things, is fed with gold that is marked, that is required, and the refinery is fed with gold that is marked as responsibly sourced. Responsibly sourced gold is gold which is extracted legally with due regard to the environment and devoid of conflict, human rights abuse, and or child labor. The current issues of illegal mining pose a big threat to our value addition efforts as it has a real potential of tainting gold, the gold door, which will be fed into the refinery therefore making it difficult to meet the responsible sourcing requirements and by extension the ability to operate with international certification. This is why the Royal Ghana Gold Refinery must ensure that its entire feedstock is responsibly sourced. There is therefore a compelling reason more than ever to ensure that we live in the, we live the menace of Kalamse in the back to ensure responsible mining and safeguard our environment and water bodies. Our overarching objective for dealing decisively with the Galamse menace and enhancing the small-scale mining sector is to improve lives and livelihoods and protect the environment. Our approach will be five prong. Firstly, part of the reasons for Galamse is because there are no properly documented geological surveys indicating areas with proven reserves. This problem causes miners, mainly illegal miners, and some small-scale license holding miners to dig everywhere and anyhow in search for gold and eventually destroy large parcels of land with little or no success in finding gold. I believe that having proper data on areas with proven reserves for small-scale mining will avert the problem of trial and error digging and optimize land use. In view of this, our government, but hopefully the next MPP government under my presidency, will to adequately provide the Geological Survey Department and our REIT universities with the resources annually to investigate and undertake mapping of areas where we have mineral resources. A minimum of $10 million annually will be invested in this geological investigation of mineralized zones from next year. With evidence of proven reserves we will ensure that the earmarked concessions in these resource mapped areas with proven reserves will be 100% owned for small scale mining. Yes. Secondly, many people opt to mine without a license because of delays and bureaucracies as well as the high cost in acquiring mining licenses. To address this challenge, we will amend the existing mining law to ensure that the entire licensing regime from application to the grant of a small-scale mining license will end at the Minerals Commission with the involvement of our chiefs and district assemblies. This will require that we decentralize the operations of the Minerals Commission and the Environmental Protection 
agents to all the mining districts. Thirdly, there must be an increased effort towards reclamation of the degraded mining lands. This would require a carefully planned program and consistent resource allocation. The next MPP government will set up a reclamation fund with an annual dedicated budget to implement the land reclamation program. The private sector will be invited to participate. At the same time, growing decentralization of the Minerals Commission and the EPA, it will be deepened by the next FDP government, will enable increased compliance and enforcement to safeguard our land and environment. Fourthly, pollution of our water bodies through mining is a major national concern. The Mercury Free Gold Catcher Machine, which has been piloted and used in many mining areas by our government, has proven to be effective and safer. The next MPP government will scale up the use of this technology through technical support for sustainable small-scale mining. In addition, the construction of settlement dams will be attached to ensure safe storage and treatment of discharged water from the gold catcher operations. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, but as far as the benefits, as getting the benefits from our gold is concerned, I think we can say um, no fear of contradiction that Ghana has been asleep for a long time. At the end of 2016, the total reserves of gold at the Bank of Ghana, for Ghana was 8.7 tons. 8.7 tons. That is Ghana's total gold reserves. This compares to 3,352 tons for Germany, 2,814 tons for the IMF, 2,451 tons for Italy, and 8,133 tons for the United States. Now, it did not make sense when you look at this data that Ghana, the largest gold producer in Africa, will have some of the lowest holdings of gold reserves. It was against this background that the Bank of Ghana started the Gold Pages program. Uh, and and, and you, the governor has made the point for 60 years after independence, we had 8.7 times. 60 years after independence. Once the Bank of Ghana started it, Gold Pages program in 21. After three years, we have moved from 8.7 tons to 73 tons. We bought an additional 65 tons of gold in just three years. And that tells you where we were asleep for a very, very long time. However, Given the large amount of gold reserves Ghana has, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Ghana has seven large gold beds, from Axim and Winneba to Nangodi and Laura. According to the Geological Survey Department, the belts cover an area of 43,000 square kilometers, with about 50% that is 21,000 kilometers, square kilometers, not explored at all. The conservative estimate is that the potential quantum of gold in these unexplored belts is around 5 billion ounces. This has a market value today of $10 trillion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why my government will engage exploration experts from the universities and the Geological Survey Department 
to assist in exploring our seven gold belts. However, we, even if only 5% of the potential estimate materializes, it will be a game changer. For Ghana, let me say that with all the measures that we are putting in place to revamp the gold sector, the mineral sector, you know, licensing regime, we will have also a minerals development bank to help the, the mineral sector. And so um, I would like to, to put, propose a new foreign exchange regime management architect for Ghana next year, in which the value of the city with everything that we are putting will be anchored to gold. This is what we do. I want us to move our foreign exchange management because we need an anchor. And we, I believe that the best anchor for the city is gold. So I want us to anchor the city to gold. I'm proposing a framework. Uh, we'll discuss, of course, with the central bank, uh, and we'll see where. But the framework that I'm proposing is very simple. Having looked at all that we have done, so all significant demand for gold should be channeled through the Bank of Ghana's gold purchase program. So that if you we are looking, if you have say a three billion CDs and you are looking to buy forex, Bank of Ghana can take the three billion CDs and buy gold and give you your forex. Demand equals supply. Exchange rate as a move. Is this a simple? Use of our gold our reserves future, future. to uh, reach hope. the demand uh, for only hope. So our once you you can anchor the city with gold, so that you 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 are able to meet demand, uh, then there's so much extra forex reserves to do other things uh, for the country. But then you will maintain long-term exchange rates, the which solutions. will be anchored on gold, Thank you. and then we will move forward. You are only hope. You are only hope. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the refinery we are launching today has the capacity to refine 400 kilograms of dory gold per day. It can therefore refine 132 tons of gold, more than all of the gold exported from Ghana at 300 working days per year. This refinery has adequate capacity to meet the needs of Ghana and surrounding gold producing countries. It is my expectation that our domestic mines will be fully on board and make this refinery their first port of call. With, it, with that kind of support, the refinery can obtain the LBMA Good Delivery List accreditation in three years, making it the second such refinery in Africa. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we commission this state-of-the-art refinery, let us remember that this is a stepping stone towards setting Ghana's goal on the global market. The Royal Ghana Gold Refinery symbolizes our determination to harness our mineral resources for the maximum benefit of all Ghanaians. Let us strive for excellence, innovation, and sustainable economic development while ensuring responsible extraction of our mineral resources. We have a responsibility as government to work collaboratively with the Royal Ghana Gold Refinery to attain LBMA certification. Government will support the small scale and large scale miners across the country and will need their collaboration and trust in this once in a lifetime nation building exercise. At present, the government is pursuing this international certification with efforts led jointly by the Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. On the back of this, that I know, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we will work collaboratively with the key stakeholders, particularly the large and small scale miners on how best
to progressively work towards refining all gold in Ghana before they are exported. We must begin and support the process of acquiring the LBMA certification. Now, I would like at this moment to thank um, all the key players. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, who I call the bulldozer, uh, has really been so, so supportive and, and making sure things happen. Um, I, I, I have been very, very, very impressed with his understanding of, of the issues and making sure that decisions were taken on time to bring this project to full fruition. Thank you very much. I would like to also thank the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, for his sterling leadership in this area. The Bank of Ghana, as you know, has to always make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So he was sometimes moving too slow for our life. <laughs> so he, 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 this took longer because they had to check and double check and triple check every e, T and I, you know. So, but ha having come from the bank, I understood him better than uh, some of my other colleagues. Yeah. Uh, but I really, really thank you so much for for for. for I would also like to thank the Minister for Finance um, and Economic Planning. You know, who is every day surprising me with his depth of knowledge on so many, many issues and, and, and really gets things done for us. I'm so, so grateful. He made this happen. I want to thank you, Dr. Amina. I also want to thank uh, my good friend, you know, lawyer, and you are from the PMMC. So, PMMC did so well. Uh, their board as well, uh, they've really helped. This was a very collaborative effort, really collaborative effort to make it done uh, and to make it happen. And uh, I'm so happy that it has happened now. Uh, but I want to tell all of them, this is only the beginning. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot more work to make the dream come true. The dream will come true. It is possible. Thank you very much. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands.